Are you tired of blowing out your back at the bathtub while washing your dog or subjecting your canine to a water torture bath while leashed up to a post outside? Now there's a far more effective way to wash your pet while saving your back and keeping your dog happy. It's called Booster Bath, a portable bathtub on legs. Head over to BoosterBath.com, one word, and pick one up. Available in three sizes, this tub system features a drain, a soap cubby, and water controlling wand. This tub conveniently breaks down to be stored when not in use. Want to save 10% on your first time purchase? Head over and sign up today to make that happen. BoosterBath.com This is the Hard Parking Podcast, the other side of the wheel. This is the first show of the other side of the wheel. Second show of 2021 brought to you by Right Honda out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Guys, this is finally, this is finally my 50th episode. And it seems like it took forever to get here, but I'm glad it's here. I thought it'd be on the main show. So this show is the shortened version of the show. A lot more car talk, a lot more car news constraint in a smaller space. First thing I want to talk about is the concourse in Fountain Hills has already been canceled. It's been pushed back to 2022. So that's the first car event to fall this year. It makes sense because COVID rates are going through the roof. I'm trying to get over it myself right now. Yes, that's right. You heard me. I said that and I will talk about it on the bigger show. Don't want to waste your time talking about it right now, but concourse has been canceled. Future Collector Car Show is coming up in a few months. That's probably hanging in the air. Fuel Fest is coming up. If you feel like you heard this last year, you did. Fuel Fest last year got postponed twice. Before we go any further, I want to tell you guys about Four Wheel Online. For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs, dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. Their truck products Cover everything to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. Need a wheel and tire package? Head over and use a configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheel and tires. So go get outfitted today. Visit them online at 4Wheel Online or call them at 813-769-2451. Damn, I wish I had a truck. I have a truck. I do need some new wheels. Oh, well, maybe you should uh, go to 4Wheel Online and who are you? Oh, I'm your stripper gram that you ordered. Stripper gram. So you have to do it from the other side of the door. So it's almost like an Amsterdam thing, right? Because with this whole Rona situation, you got to keep your distance. Or I'll be the last Correct. person you strip for for a it's while. Okay. How's your new year? It's good. How about you? Besides this? Yeah, man, I could, I could eat up the entire show complaining about that. <laughs> but I'm not going to. Going to get into some news here. We have a, a new NSX that got crashed. So Josh Jacobs is a running back for the, and it, it's so weird for me to say this because it's difficult because it's not Oakland. It's not Los Angeles, but Las Vegas Raiders. So last week after their last game of the season, he was, he crashed his 2019 Acura NSX on a DUI. I don't know if it was a major one, but NSX is down. It's interesting how many famous people out there. Well, it's 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 kind of weird. So Acura, you know, they haven't sold a lot of the new NSXs. And I keep calling them new NSX, although they came out in 2017. But I could say NC1, and eventually people will understand what NC1 is. A lot of people just refer it to the second-gen NSX, I guess. So they haven't sold a lot, but there are some pretty famous people with them, like Michael B. Jordan has one as well. I'm still thinking about trending that way. Not quite sure. What I'm going to do on that avenue, but 2021 is the year where I need to decide. But so far, this year isn't really starting out as as awesome as we had hoped. Just got done filming a short video, and I'm in the middle of editing that. So hopefully, by the time this podcast releases, that video will be available as well. It's another fun sort of I wouldn't say parody video, but I linked up with my good friend Tyson Hughey, so he gets the keys thrown to him on a regular basis. So he gets to drive around with cars, whether they're Acura or Honda or whatever. And I also involve right Honda with that. So a fun video coming out involving me, a Honda civic and a Honda fit. So you'll find out if it's the right fit or not. 
saw a vehicle the other day, really cool vehicle. 2021 Genesis GV80. I was leaving actually right Honda, believe it or not, after filming some footage and I looked over and I was like, what the hell is that? Because it looked kind of like a, a Volvo because the Volvos have the super nice SUVs. Didn't quite look like a Land Rover, but maybe. So I took a video of it. I sent it to my son. He has a Genesis, the car. But I looked this thing up and it looks like it's anywhere from 45,000 to 71,000 nicely equipped. And the thing about this thing is it was actually, it's already won a bunch of awards. Yeah, I can't believe I'm going to actually say this, but that thing actually looks pretty nice with that big grill and the, the lights that look like the Volvo XC90s. Yeah. I must admit, for Genesis, that's pretty nice there. No, nothing against Genesis, but, you know, a Genesis SUV. Huh, I'm actually quite impressed. So, see, you know how, how the Genesis broke out and they're like their cars, like their big body cars. They've always looked incredibly impressive. And it's like, damn, what is that? Some badass Mercedes when they first came out and you look at you, go, oh, it's just a Hyundai, which kind of sucks. <laughs> right? It, it sucks for them, but it's my son has one and that is a badass car. Yeah, it looks really nice. I like the the interior. The interior, that center console, is pretty different too. Oh, that thing's incredible. And the seats. Yeah, so car and driver, it's it's a top ten of their of their vehicles, which is really cool. In fact, they ranked, and it actually beat out. So it came in at number one of their best ten. It beat out a Porsche Cayenne at number two, an X five at number three an XC90 Volvo at number four, an Audi RS Q8 at number five, and a BMW X6 at number six. So how about that? That's wild, man. It's them dang Koreans. <laughs> Put oh, that wait. in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> I'm it's, guessing. It's my people. It's your peeps. Well, <laughs> it's my peeps. Apparently the one to buy is a 3.5 Prestige, and that's the one that's like 70,000, 71. But I like how it starts at 49, so... If people are out there listening and they're thinking about getting a badass, nice SUV and you don't care about having a big Mercedes, because let's face it, a lot of people are brand chasers, but you can mm -hmm. get a lot for a little when it comes to vehicles, as long as you know where to go. And Hyundais are all nice anyway, but the GV80, this thing is creme de la creme, man. I dig it. I might even get one. Can you imagine me in a little mini SUV like that? It's not that small. Well... It's, yeah, but I'm coming from the truck, though, too, so, you know. You are. Big, small, big, small. This thing looks about the same size as the XC90. I really loved my XC90. That was really nice. Kind of miss it. What's the engine specs on that, on the, the Genesis? So we have a 2.5 to 3.5, right? And mm -hmm. starts at 300, caps at 375, which hmm. isn't, you know. I guess it's maybe okay. So what is your, what is your, which XC90 did you have? Uh, I had the, the XC90 T6, I think it was, which was the T6 Platinum. It okay. had that uh, supercharger and turbo. Yeah, I was looking at the, the T8 hybrid and I built one and it ended up costing like $78,000. So I bailed on it. Not that I was going to buy it anyway, but just love the headlights and the, that screen on the inside. So so typically the way this episode is going to go is we're going to have a social media spotlight of the week. And so those of you who are listening to the other podcast are sort of familiar with me bringing on just random people around social media. This time, I think I'm going to try to grab people around the Phoenix area and just car specific. So I want people to talk about their builds a little bit and some of the things that, that may have motivated them over the years. So that's stuff that you guys could look forward to in a future episode. Right now, I'm going to talk about, since 2020 is behind us. Thank goodness. There were like the best selling cars of 2020. And I decided to shrink that down into the top five. So starting with number five, the Honda CRV. I remember, remember these things when they first came out? Oh, yeah. Stripper boy, Eddie. Yeah, I remember. A buddy of mine fit uh, two twenties in a little CRV. This was like the late nineties, right? Like a ninety seven, ninety eight, or something. They were like these cute yeah. little geo tracker size things. Mm -hmm. They sold three hundred thirty three thousand five hundred two. What? Yeah. 
So like CRVs, CRVs, yeah. So that's good for number five. And that's actually down thirteen percent. Damn, didn't know it made a comeback. Number four, coming in number four was a Toyota Rav Four, four hundred thirty thousand three hundred eighty-seven sales, down three point nine percent. So Rav Four was the same thing, right? So when the Rav Four first came out, it was kind of this little wussy looking thing that nobody. It actually looked kind of like a like a G two transformer. You know, when they got mm-hmm. rid of all the cool ones first and they started doing like weird shit, like remember wheelie and cup and those transformers, like that's, it kind of reminded me of like a, just something just stupid. Yeah. My dad had one of those rav fours when they first came out. I was like, what the hell is this thing? So my friend Brian, his wife bought one. This was probably 2016, 2015, 16. And that was part of the kind of the newer design. And that mm-hmm. thing was impressive as hell. It was, I think, it was the first generation where they actually Toyota stepped their game up, and the Rav Four actually looked pretty cool. Number three, that's actually me doing that too. It's not like a a sound clip. That's that's my voice, by the way. Number three, coming in number three is the Ram truck. It just says Ram truck, so I guess that covers all. I don't know how many. There's fifteen hundred, twenty five hundred, two thousand, thirty five hundred, whatever you know. You're semi truck guys, so you know how that is. But I like the new Rams. They look pretty dope, man. Five hundred sixty-three thousand six hundred seventy-six down eleven percent from two thousand nineteen. Have you seen those? Yeah, yeah. I've seen the the Laramies and the the big horns. I like the big horns. Those are pretty nice. So it says here for twenty one, Ram has a seven hundred two horsepower TRX. <laughs> I'm sure. Designed for tackling off road terrain at high speeds. Uh huh. Well, everybody's trying to get into the the market that the the Raptors conquered. And what do you drive, by the way? Uh, a Raptor, a Tesla. Yeah, Tesla three. A Raptor. Yeah. Number two, the Chevrolet Silverado, five hundred ninety four thousand ninety four. Looks like that's that about three point two percent. Same thing as the Ram. It encompasses all. Yeah, it looks like it. It looks like it encompasses all. And actually, Silverado overtook Ram as the best-selling truck, and this would have to be why, because it came in at number two instead of mm-hmm. number three. I guess that's a big deal if you're a truck guy. I like trucks. I don't consider myself a truck guy. Number one. The number one, the Ford F-Series. Oh. That's right. 787,422 of these things were sold, which is down 12.2%. So that's So we have Ford... Chevy and Dodge trucks all took one, two, and three of the top 20 vehicle sales in all of 2020. Three trucks. America. In fact, I forgot what number four was already, but number five was a Honda CRV. So we have potentially, there wasn't a vehicle, right? They were all trucks or SUVs? SUVs, yeah. Number four was the RAV4. Oh, yeah, that's right. This thing has 14,000 pound towing capacity. Or one of these. Let's see the, I think the 21 F-150, which is kind of the staple truck. Do mm-hmm. you like Ford F-150s? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, my work used to primarily be a fleet of uh, Fords, the F-150s and 250s, and then we actually just switched over to Rams. The uh, What do you think of those Kia Tellurides? Did I say it right? Is it a Telluride or Telluride? I think tell you right. Just the way you said it, I can't pronounce it. I think they're actually pretty sleek looking. Yeah, they're 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 nice. And I think Hyundai has like a, a cool looking it's not a Genesis, but I think they have kind of a cool looking SUV. So I have this theory. I have this theory that every ten years a car maker that people have talked crap about rises to the top. And I think Kia has been on that climb the last half dozen years or so starting with the Kia Optima and this like the Kia, even the, the Kia Sportage got better. Who else? The Hyundai Hyundai has been on that climb even before the Genesis broke off and had its own thing. Who do you, I don't know who who's declining. I mean, BMW still looks nice. Don't get me wrong. I love BMW, but I think they're kind of behind the game on a couple of things, you know, I love their new grills and stuff, but some of the interiors is still a little outdated. They're late to the game with like the whole Audi. electric stuff. 
Audi, Audi with the e-tron. I mean, that thing is freaking amazing. But I think Audi is the one. I think Audi's on the decline because yeah. I remember they were the first to have the really cool daytime running lamps. And we're talking mm-hmm. shit. It seemed like yesterday, but 2010, right? We're talking the 2010, 2011 Audi. Like we have a 2011 Audi and those commercials, like they just, it was that whole break away from the mold thing. Stop being boring. I think Audi was, they've have a, a couple of cool cars, like the RS6 Avant. You know what I mean? Like everyone's losing their shit over that car because it's bad. But the Audis themselves, I think they kind of peaked. BMW's not looking too hot with those big ass grills. But you also look at kind of the trend too. Look, look at it. You got Mercedes, BMW, and Audi, right? They all used right. to be just monster engine companies, you know, at least on the European side. And now they're they're changing over to these quote unquote efficiency engines, you know, smaller turbos or, you know, little hybrid things. And they're losing a lot of their, their fan base, their loyalty fan base. You know, they were known for being, you know, powerhouses, but I think they're kind of losing their fan base a little bit. And I think that's kind of driving some, of some of the things away, not necessarily, you know, towards Genesis and the SUVs, but I just think you, 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 you leave some stuff behind and some stuff that's outdated. You're, you're going to, you're going to lose your hardcore, uh, hardcore people. Is there anything uglier than a, like a, a mid eighties Mercedes? I mean, there's a few things uglier, but when I think about those, you think about that kind of dirty gold wheels that used to be popular and it just looks so tacky. Yeah. But you and I are eighties kids. Those man. So I don't know. There's still something at heart with, with, with the matey cars. <laughs> mm, I'm claiming nineties, bro. Uh, really? I'm more of an 80s kid. I love the 80s stuff in the 90s. Like a 1985 90s. Mercedes-Benz 300D turbo with the big round lights. And the look, I don't know, that's just, I don't know, man. I don't think the 80s were too kind to the to the Mercedes. <laughs> I think the 90s were, you know, starting with the, the 190E. And then they started, you know, they had the 300, no, 500 and the 600 SLs. Mm-hmm. Time for an exciting new segment. I have not pitched this to sponsors. I know people are begging to get into the show. So for right now, well, we're going to call this Thoughts from the Road. And Thoughts from the Road is sponsored by Ride Sold. Ride Sold, online auction site. It's the next big thing. Get with it. Ridesold.com. Follow them on Instagram at ride.sold. Full disclosure, Stripper Eddie and I. We're marketing for Ride Sold, so that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. So figure it out. Get it. Because we're going to grow together. So this is Thoughts from the Road. Eddie, what do you have? Oh, I was making an observation while I was heading to this fancy restaurant called Le Burger King, and I'm sitting at a stoplight. Le Burger King. And, <laughs> and uh, just got to the red light, you know, and you see the turn lane. There's a truck that's just sitting in the turn lane after the light turns green. Car behind him honks, lays down the horn. The guy jets forward, hits the brakes to make the car behind him stop, then flips him off, makes the turn, and I'm just watching this, right? And I noticed the guy was on his phone earlier, and Mm. he pulls off to the side of the road, lets the car that honked the horn behind him go, and then starts to peel out and chase that car. And I'm thinking to myself, how in any reality that you're on the phone and not paying attention that you have the right to get mad at someone behind you? that wants to make a turn and then start acting a fool on the road. That's just not cool at all. I mean, you know, you don't know if the other car has kids in there or whatever the case may be. Someone honks a horn at you. Ain't no reason to get all salty with them, but it was just a weird observation. I I just kind of find it funny in this day and age that you're in the wrong of something. You're not paying attention. Someone honks at you and you get all pissed off. Yeah. Not only that is, like I said on the last episode, we're in Arizona, man, and our state has flipped the switch and and taken stuff serious. So, being on the phone, whether it's on, on in his hand or on the side of his head, that's a minimum of six hundred dollars, man. So he better watch yeah. his ass. Watch his ass. That's a thing. That's a thing now. No more warnings. But that's a good thought. Thought I had. I get frustrated. So I never understood the speed limit. Okay, because the speed limit. People go, so let's say speed limit is 45. 
So what do people think? There's like, I can't go faster than 45. But people say, no, let me go. I, I need to go at least 45. There needs to be a speed range. And I think people can get behind this. I think so everywhere that says 45 right now, the speed range should be 40 to 55. Because there's no road that's a speed limit of 45 that you can't really go 55. But if you go 30, you're going too slow because everyone's expecting you to go at least 45. And so what happens is you can actually cause an accident by driving too freaking slow. So I think the speed, there needs to be a speed range. Now, if you fall outside of that range, you know, like I speed all the time, right? In most places, you know, and you know, what, you know, we all kind of, you know, we all kind of, right? Blasphemy. No, never. Right. You know, we all kind of, yeah. But here's the thing. If you're going too slow, I almost feel like the, the punishment should be stiffer than if you're going too fast with the exception of recklessly too fast. Like plus 20 over, I get it, which, you know, we do sometimes on the highway, but plus 20 over, if you're one under, no, if you're five under the minimum of the speed range, you need to be fined as much as you would be if you were 25 over. So I think there needs to be a speed range, not a speed limit. Yeah, uh, snowbirds. <clears throat> Not even snowbirds, man. Just I'm gonna sign that to a prop. Like that's gonna be prop six one six Arizona. Prop six one six. Everybody, go and find prop six one six and vote speed range over speed limit. Coming up on the next episode of the Hard Parking Podcast, as we wrap this episode up. See, that was quick, quick and efficient. Yeah. Love I'm it. let you guys know about Carbona. One thing our sponsor is Right Honda, high quality detail, Kuya Automotive, NSX Channel, Booster Bath, Four Wheel Online. More sponsors coming for this show. More sponsors coming from the next show. For Mad Puppy Eddie, for Stripper Eddie, I'm Jay. Follow me at NA2NSX on Instagram or JHAE underscore travels. That's J underscore travels. Park Parking Podcast at gmail.com. Jay Finning on Twitter. False Patreon. We can't grow unless show the world how good the show is. Let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. Yeah, that's all I have, man. Now it's stripping time. As a lot of you guys know, my daily driver is a 2007 Infiniti FX35 Sport. It's about time I put some money into it. Can't just drive the NSX around all the time looking nice. Want to get some wheels? For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They're dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. Their truck products cover everything you need for a custom look and added functionality. I was talking about a wheel and tire package. Head over and use a configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so go get outfitted today. Visit them at 4Wheel Online. That's 4Wheel, singular, online. Are you tired of your dog losing its cool in a thunderstorm or fireworks? You might want to look at tongue treats. TongueTreats.com, high anxiety relief, pain relief, inflammation relief. It's a direct connection between the tongue and the brain. Doesn't waste time going down to the stomach where it gets broken down, enters the bloodstream, then to the brain eventually. By then, little Izzy, my dog, has been hiding under the house for like 20 minutes. The Tongue Treat CBD strips provide rapid results for your pet with the right amount of CBD, which is not psychoactive. It's important to test and verify your pet is getting the proper dosage. A single strip should be enough. Have doubts? There's certified analysis from a lab available on the website. Think about it. Efficacy and economy. Tongue treats.